Where does self-confidence come from? And this is the best advice I can give you on that. Not neglecting, first of all, the small daily disciplines. Self-confidence really comes from feeling good about yourself. And one of the best ways to feel good about yourself is at the end of the day to know that you poured it on. You did your best. If you conducted a meeting, you did the best you could. If you made a phone call, it was the best phone call you could possibly make. If you wrote a letter, it wasn't a casual letter, it was your best letter. At the end of those kind of days, when you feel good about yourself, self-confidence starts to rise. You know that if you can have this kind of a good day, you can have another one the next day, and those days become the weeks, the weeks become the months, and the month becomes a powerful year. Self-confidence comes from the lack of neglect. If you will not neglect to do the small daily disciplines, that's where self-confidence comes from. Part of good health is self-confidence. I know I'm going to be healthy. I eat the apple a day. I walk around the block. I do the jogging on the beach. At the end of the day, when you've really poured it on and you've done all the stuff, self-confidence grows. That self-confidence affects your health, it affects your future, it affects your psyche. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. Some people say, well, I'll do it for a little while and see what happens. You know, I'll try a couple of things. If that doesn't work, I'm out of here. And all of us know that that kind of person doesn't have much of a future. But if you're willing to do whatever it takes, if I have to learn a couple of things, I will learn those things. If I got to learn five or six things, I'll learn all six. If I have to take an extra class, I'll take an extra class. If I've got to read the books, I'll read the books. If I have to consult with people who know more than I know, I will do the necessary consulting. Whatever it takes, I will do. That starts to develop unbelievable self-confidence. Self-confidence also comes from the ability to rise above your circumstances to rise above what happens, the petty little things, the discouraging things that would sink everyone else's ship except yours, that would cause someone else to quit early in the day, but you keep going. That kind of willingness to overcome all circumstances, whether it's the little challenges or the big challenges, if you're willing to do that, I promise you, this kind of power will work for you, and in you, the variable, it'll make a difference. Here's the greatest value of discipline, self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. The least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist, you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal and you won't take pictures and then you won't do this. You won't do wise things with your money. You won't do wise things with your time. You won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated and we say you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action. Take it. 
Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one accident, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Key. A lot of people don't ever do the things they're capable of doing because they allow themselves to go alone with the crowd, following the crowd. Many people have things they want to do and, and they find themselves in relationships with people who are addicted to mediocrity and they allow their behavior to influence their behavior. Many people don't do it because of the fact that they allow their lack of self-confidence to immobilize them. Of the five things that you would like to do if you had the courage to do, I want you to pick one thing. Pick one. And here's how to set it up for yourself that will help free you and get you unstuck. What is the worst thing that can happen if you do it? So what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's say going into business for yourself or changing careers or getting a divorce, taking some kind of chance of something that you've always thought about doing, but you just haven't done it for whatever reason. What's the worst thing that can happen? Do the worst case scenario. Now, when you do the worst case scenario, you write those things down, the worst things that you fear would happen when you name your fears that put you in control, what are you afraid of? Name it, write it out so you can look at it. Now that takes you to the next step. What are the benefits? What are the benefits of your acting courageously, taking life on? Write the benefits down and then focus on them. Focus on the benefits, not on the liabilities, not on your fears. Think about how good you feel. Think about the level increased self-respect, the sense of self-worth that you'll feel. How good you'll feel getting up in the morning, looking yourself in the mirror because you're taking life on. The majority of the fears that we have are not life or death fears. They're not those kind of fears. But through our imagination, we blow them out of proportion and we give them more power than they actually have or deserve and we permit them to govern our lives. We permit them to determine how far we can stretch out on our dreams and discovering our stuff. As you assess yourself and, and begin to prove yourself and just say, wait, hold a minute, hold a minute. I've been sweating this out. What's the worst thing that can happen to me on this? Will it kill me? Will I die? Why, why am I going through all of these changes over this? How much power does this really have? And am I the one that's feeding the power into it? See, a lot of times we, we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed into to being afraid. I mean, you watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind? that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you are staying where you are. I believe anybody who's ever done anything, who's ever taken a chance, doesn't mean that they are not afraid. Courageous does not mean being the absence of fear. I think that being courageous is willing to do it because that's what you feel and you're going to do it anyhow. You're not going to be immobilized by your fears or your doubts. You admit, okay, I'm scared to death. Now, okay, what is it that I must choose to do? Go ahead and experience that fear. But don't let that fear immobilize you. The root of the word confidence is the word confide. Confide is a compound word derived from the Latin language meaning with and trust or faith. Confidence enables you to walk into a room full of strangers and converse with anyone without fear. It makes the strangers in that room think, here is someone I not only can talk to, here's someone I want to talk to. A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Conversely, distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. 
the question for us here is, how do you and I develop confidence? How do I learn to believe in myself so that others will believe in me too? I think I can give some very specific answers to your question. There are three areas which we have to talk about before you're ready to add confidence to the other building blocks of your unshakable character. Those three are first, developing the quality of inspiring confidence by uncovering your own confidence in who you are and how you were raised. Second, seeing how you can derive confidence from that formal education and training you've received and the characteristics of your teachers and mentors. And third, drawing confidence from the challenges and experiences you've had in all areas of your life and the success you've had in dealing with them. Let's look at each one of these areas one by one. First, to grow up at all means that you have certain kinds of vital equipment that are necessary to survive in this tough, technical, highly developed world of ours. Your parents taught you basic skills, how to walk, how to eat, and later feed yourself, and what to eat, and perhaps good manners. You were given a certain amount of physical strength and mental endowments. Maybe you aren't a rocket scientist, but maybe you know how to fix a lawnmower, something many rocket scientists cannot do. Maybe you don't have a degree in accounting, but you can tell a joke so well that a whole room will roar with laughter. What are your strong points? They have to be there or you wouldn't have made it this far. Maybe you can save money. Maybe you know how to find things like somebody's lost contact lenses. Chances are you not only have a personal strength, a gift or talent or real ability that should be a source of pride and give you real confidence, but it's something you take so for granted that you don't realize what it's worth. We're not talking about what's difficult for you but about what comes easy. Just because it's easy for you to cut true with a cross-cut saw doesn't mean that it's easy for everybody. Your talent and skill is what you take for granted and maybe don't value enough. Talent isn't hard work. It's what's a snap. Second, if you grew up in this country, you attended school and more than likely have a high school education. Here's another case of almost everybody's got it and I've got it, so why should I take confidence in my diploma? First of all, not everybody's got that diploma. And second of all, this is one of the few countries in the world where almost everyone can read and write and do math. Also your teachers, your mentors, who showed you the ropes at the first job or at the new place, they saw something in you that you maybe didn't see yourself. Want to know what that something is exactly? Well, if you can pinpoint what they gave you, what they showed you, you will see yourself through the eyes of that other person, that teacher or mentor or newfound friend. Because what they give you is what they see in you already, invisible to yourself. If they didn't see that you were capable of running that machine, taking that order, landing that account, making that sale just as they were capable, then they wouldn't bother to teach you in the first place. They had confidence in abilities that you may not have known you had. And they shared that confidence with you because you already had the skill. You only needed the sharing. Third and lastly, and even more important than where you were born and who your parents are, and whether or not you went to any school or the right school, and whether or not anyone stood by you or showed you the ropes. You have lived, and you are here, so you have the richest bank to draw upon that there is. You have experience. You may have traveled around the world. You may have known many people and learned the ways of other lands and other languages. Or you may have experienced life in the same place among people you've known all your life and known them in a way that no one on the move forever dealing with new faces and new friends can ever know another person. That's your bankroll. That's where you can learn and draw from with confidence. Because the thing about experience is, it really works. If it didn't, you wouldn't be here.
Chả lời quên khi cơn mưa đêm lại về Em lại quên lời thề và ta như đông chìm sâu Không cần mới em anh nhận màu yeah, ooh, Em chỉ cần mơ nó bay bay yeah. Chỉ còn là những cơn mơ vô ra Cho bên mơ em không mơ anh yeah. Anh một đêm mơ Chỉ cần bên em không được cần nhớ Và chỉ có em không muốn nhớ Còn người ta bên nhau như người ta
told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you, but I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side, maybe we could be okay Okay, okay, maybe you could be the change I need today, I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you will choose to stay through all the pain I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Try to stay strong and fake